Those Damn Ross Kids is a podcast for adults, and the opinions expressed do not reflect the opinions of our employers or even ourselves. We'd like to hear from you. Give us a call at 419-528-TDRK to leave a voicemail, and we just may play it on the show. I'm thinking about starting the blog. WhyDaddyDrinks.info. What would you know about it? I don't know. And just, just like the the things that kids do that would make a person drink. You don't have any kids. I, no, I know of. It sounds like a totally fictional blog. Well, no, you have to you you have to write what you don't know. Is that the point? That's the point of what fiction. Those damn Ross kids. A conversation between brothers featuring Chris and Cole Ross. Hey Chris, what episode is this? This is episode number 52 of the doomed internet comedy podcast, Those Damn Ross Kids. And my name is Cole, apparently doomed. Your name is... Chris. And, and, and we're doomed. Why do you say we're doomed? Because you made it this far. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is my birthday. Today, when we're recording this, I am the ripe old age of 24 here uh, as of November the 20th, which is uh, press time for this. So I am getting lots of Facebook wall posts from people that unanimously read, Happy birthday, comma, Cole, exclamation mark. Or happy birthday, man. Or happy birthday. It's like, I haven't thought about you since high school. Neat. I'm sure that they're taking it back right now. <laughs> no, That's I awesome. love it. It's nice. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a pleasantry, but it's like put a little bit of zazz in it. Put a little bit of put a little bit of juice behind that, you know, because like the way they're doing it right now, it really could just be a script, you know. All of your friends that, you know, you just you you put or you point it at Facebook and it says uh, this is person's birthday. Just write happy birthday, comma, name. And then there you go. Happy 24th birthday, Cole. Happy 24th birthday, Cole. Your favorite restaurant is blank. I hope you listen to some favorite band here today. <laughs> Maybe take a moment to think about person who inspires you. Ever notice everybody was always has Gandhi there? No, I I didn't no. actually. I don't know what he did. No, yeah. I have no idea. Something to do with salt. Was he the one that said Mecca like a high? <laughs> Chris, can you tell me a story? The deaths of three children have been linked to parents who own a popular spanking book titled "To Train Up a Child," written by preacher Michael Pearl of the No Greater Joy Ministry. The book promotes using a switch on babies as young as six months and plumbing tubing. On older children to keep them in line, much like, in quotes, stubborn mules. 700,000 parents, many of them homeschoolers, have purchased the self-published tome, including parents who are either currently serving prison time or have been charged in the abuse and beating deaths of three young children in the last five years. The book threatens to escalate violence against children because it advises that if you don't get the results that you want, the only thing to do is to punish harder and harder. No greater joy than beating your kids in senses. No greater joy. No than greater ministry. joy than hitting your kids. I mean, that's the stance that we can get behind here. You know, never mind that a six month old, their head isn't, isn't solid yet. It has roughly the texture and durability of a, of an overripe pear. Didn't say just to hit him on the head. I'm just, mm, I'm just mm. well, Chris, would you, heat, would you, the, would you hit a mule in the head? In the, in the heat of the moment. Yeah. Okay, if, the, <laughs> if, if, if the mule said, daddy, I want to grow up to be an artist. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, there's not a lot you can do. If I was like, shut up. Survivor's on. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely hit a mule on the head. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. Which is the one note tab, by the way. Okay, would you hit a mule on the head? No. While survivors on. Shut up, survivors on. <laughs> okay, this is awful. Children are dead. Uh, <laughs> so we should because there's some preacher that he didn't need the book title to train up a child anyway there's like all kinds of criticism people are like wanting uh, amazon to stop selling the book i mean so, i don't think you know a book should be banned i think but like three quarters of a million people have this book had this book oh no 
how many I mean, let's just say, okay, they're homeschooling, okay, so they're, they're, they're probably like really religious, which means that each one of these families has like seven kids seventeen kids. <laughs> seventeen. Yeah. Seventy kids at least. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean so seventeen times seven hundred thousand. I can't do that math in my head. I can't either. I wasn't good enough. That's how many kids. That's how many kids are being beaten and sensate on a daily basis. With plumbing. How do, imagine if dad gets angry because the sink doesn't work and the kid's like, it's because you're using, it's because you're using the pipe that, that makes the sink to beat me. <laughs> you got to imagine they'd become experts on plumbing after a while. I mean, if you can identify that pipe when it's, you know, when it's flying at you at about 50 miles an hour, what you would know? you do? <laughs> Run? <laughs> I don't know. That's bad. I, I've gotten to know that our that our blase attitude towards violence is very entertaining. So we should continue that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> is it somebody you know personally, or yeah. uh, <laughs> so? So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna you know continue with that. Um, well, I mean, what are you gonna do? Uh, well, no, it's, the damage it's, is done. It is. It's, it's done. You can't bring those poor kids back. But <laughs> it's not like we're like, oh yeah, well, you know, new violence is cool. It's just old violence. It's old violence. It's out there. Yeah. No, no. It's just uh, it's one of those things. I love that. Uh, I love that philosophy. I love that ethos. If what you're doing is not achieving the intended effect, just just do it harder, dummy. Just do it harder. That's all. <laughs> That's all you need to do. That's all. All you need to do is it harder. Yeah, it just it's, it's as simple as that. You know, common sense ain't common, Chris. Well, Chris, you know that I am a fan of, of, of violence and I have a Google search alert set up every time somebody commits an act of violence with an archaic weapon. Yeah, and really? I do. Mm. And one of the chief, um, let's say postulates, mm -hmm. you know, I'd even go so far as to say axioms mm -hmm. of, uh, of the show so far has been that the katana, the Japanese samurai sword is the official weapon of crazy people. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's what's affordable when you're high late night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, the tip got me. All right. <laughs> this is a tale, Chris, of spurned love and high school drama with a bloody and spectacular ending. Robert Marquardt, who was 18, was dating a girl who then left him. Happens every day. Unable to get over the loss and just consumed with jealousy, Marquardt proceeded to attack her new love interest with a four-foot-long samurai sword, or katana, as they say in the Far East. Feel my Hanzo steel, Chris. The result was a few lacerations and several stitches. Since the blade wasn't sharpened, it was a toy sword. Not a toy sword, but, you know, one of those replicas you get when you're high. Late, late at night. night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After the attack, the victim asked Marquardt uh, for a ride to the hospital since he was bleeding out. You know, Marquardt agreed. The, the, and Mark, that's the girl. <laughs> no, no, no. That's the guy the who girl. attacked him. He asked the attacker to drive him to the hospital. <laughs> and the attacker drove him to the hospital. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> right. The shocked victim had only this to say. A samurai sword? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. You're in the Thank hospital. So. <laughs> no, I, I guess it worked. Um, if he's convicted, Marquardt, the attacker, might face up to 41 years in prison. That's bullshit. With a deadly that's, weapon. That's BS. That needs to be mitigated. Like, that's up to you. That's the maximum sentence. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, commute that down. Maybe some community service. You know, get them out there, you know, clearing some brush, right? I propose a simple equation for sentencing. Okay. Violence divided by awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> times a factor derived yeah. from the number so of stitches that it resulted in 41 years and your okay. awesomeness is a scale of one to 25 <laughs> this is clearly a 10 that's a four-year sentence yeah at the most that's it at the most and good behavior too yep <laughs> next <laughs> what else you got oh are we are no we, I'm just, <laughs> okay no uh, i'm the are, are passing, I'm, the, I'm the judge this, right now this apparently. is binding it does go on it does go on the internet therefore it is legally binding yes so just you know we're on katana watch 24 7 what are you gonna do not a lot i guess <laughs> I mean, that'd be a great tumbler to set up wouldn't it what to set up katana <laughs> to something documenting new katana attacks you should see the picture of this guy it'll, it'll probably probably be linked in the show notes but he looks like a he, he looks like a real dweeb somebody who would have a katana at ready access <laughs> and somebody who girls wouldn't want to be around so 
Why are you laughing at me? I'm just making I know, eye my, contact. My brain is I, my brain is just turning. Okay, okay. I was actually thinking of a more apt blog for you. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Tell me. It's just like the living, like the living room ninja. <laughs> <laughs> People like send in their you know their videos themselves, just doing ninja in front of a camera. Doing, uh, I'm sorry, Chris. Doing ninja. Ninjutsu. Doing ninja or doing a ninja. Yeah, do, yeah exactly. Yeah. Because uh, there's two sides to the blog. Or doing the ninja, which is which a is dance. Which is a new I, pop dance we're making up tonight. It's a new dance. It's a new dance. It's a pop da- dance that we're making up this evening. It is a dance sensation that's sweeping the nation, Chris. It we is. We can't stop it. Do the ninja. Ha, yeah. Then throw on some flutes. You know, throw in a techno beat. Just do, so. just do the ninja right now. And the funny thing is, the ninja can be anything that you want so long as nobody sees you doing it. Yeah. Which is perfect like, for doing in your living room alone. Like when you're drinking Jolt Cola playing River City Ransom. <laughs> Barf. <laughs> yeah. See? Now, yeah, we took that and we just narrowed it straight down to like four people. There's seven people out there. <laughs> That's all it takes. This is a, it's a revolution. Another another axiom, Chris. Oh, the, wow. The law of diminishing appeal. That's our... That's, like, that, that's our... Shouting into a megaphone backwards. <laughs> um... <laughs> Which is not the same as farting into the narrow end. <laughs> but anyway, another bloody, bloody thing. This is apparently this is going to be violence day. This blood cast. Yeah, blood cast. Um, an 18 year old man traveled from Phoenix to Milwaukee for a sexual encounter with a 22 year old woman that he met on the internet. internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That he that he met. He, she was a pen pal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They they exchanged postcards for yeah, years. Carrier pigeons. But. Once he got to the residence, he was bound and stabbed numerous times over a time frame of what he described as two days. In the residence was a book titled Werewolf's Guide to Life, as well as a black folder called Intro to Sigilborn Spirits. These spirits include female werewolf spirits who engage in sexual acts. After being stabbed 300 times on the back, face, arms, legs, and neck, the man was able to free himself and was found laying on the street in the middle of a nearby intersection. Officers followed a bloody trail to an apartment where the door to one of the units was open. Inside, there was blood on the floor and on bedding in a bedroom as well as duct tape that appeared to be a restraint. The 22-year-old woman walked out of the kitchen, introduced herself to the officer, saying, I think you're here looking for me. Chris, that's self knowledge. That is a life well examined. She then told the officers that they'd been that the two had been having sex uh, for days, and that the cutting was consensual, but quickly got out of hand. <laughs> I admit, I admit, I should have pumped the brakes on the like, stabbing scene. Okay, there were like five cuts, and then all of a sudden there were two hundred ninety five, and I <laughs> and I mean, I, he, I, he got like four nose out. That I remember. It was that I remember. Red, it was a red fog yeah. that I no, entered no doubt, into. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a werewolf frenzy, Chris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a werewolf frenzy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering why a were- a so-called werewolf. We need to con- we need to confirm these outrageous claims because I don't think werewolves exist. Could be wrong. Why would a werewolf need a knife? You know, I, you should be willing to rip and tear some flesh with your bare hands and your teeth. That's it. That's all you need. It's just a little knife sex. <laughs> just, a, just a little knife play. That's just all. Just a little blade play. Come on. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Gosh. What are you going to do? Your puritanical Midwest ideals have no place here, Chris. Don't pass judgment on her. <sighs> just a werewolf it? trying to get by in this day and age. I don't know. Without being persecuted? Without being persecuted, Chris. Huh. That's all. But it's only nighttime. I mean, you have to explain to me. I'm not into all this walking, <clears throat> talking tree bullshit. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, uh, what exactly does a werewolf fit that's a nighttime in Michael J. Fox? I mean, what, was he a wolf? Or was he, he, no, he was a, he teen, was a teen, he was, he was a teen wolf, which is, so a, he wasn't a, which is a, su- a subgenus of, of werewolf. He hadn't matured yet. So he was even less responsible for his actions when he surfed on that car. Really? Okay. So I'm, I'm just I'm just saying, you know, where, whereas uh, an adult mature werewolf would have been prosecuted to the full extent of the law for surfing on that car. I mean, Michael J. Fox, as Teen Wolf, needed, uh, you know, a little bit of leeway. So what I'm asking you is, is that did is during Michael J. Fox's heyday, 
yeah. was his criteria for accepting a role in a movie that he could use a, a vehicle in an unconventional way to transport himself? Yeah, that was actually one, uh, you know, something in his rider, you okay. know, which is funny because so, he well. refused to be a rider. <laughs> <laughs> Only you. <laughs> you love yourself so I much do. sometimes. I, I love, for, for somebody who hates himself so much, I love myself so much. Mm -hmm. It's wildly fluctuating highs and lows, yeah. Chris. <laughs> now, what I would recommend to you, this works for me, okay? And I know that you find it annoying because like, I don't say anything and then I just start laughing. Yeah. It's because I, I think through... <laughs> The idea that you say. <laughs> and then you stop saying it. And then it. I don't say Chris, it and I come up with something better. Chris, you got to open up the phone. <laughs> Chris, don't you dare pull rank on me. You're not more distant. <laughs> oh, mm, so mad. Yeah, okay. Understood. I'm just saying. Hey, I at least one, he, per at least one he, person laughed at that. At least one person laughed. I don't know. Like, <laughs> if your joke is followed by, like, an air punch, yeah. it's probably wrong. Because oh. <laughs> you refuse to be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know i probably edited it out but i jumped straight up in the air and the chair hit the wall <laughs> no you, your chin goes up and you get this big goofy grin on your face yeah i can't control it i can't just like you can't control your giggles <sighs> i don't like that i don't like it when you do that because you don't you know, because i don't like secrets i don't like secrets and, well, and, and you're keeping this you know this little morsel of a secret from me you just get this look on your face like you slid something past like you're like like you like would excuse yourself walk back to my bathroom piss in my bathtub and then walk back out with that smile on your face i would the cat who uh, ate the canary chris the yeah, cat that's the who face pissed in the bathtub yeah. yeah chris can we take a moment to uh to mosey on over to the etiquette corner absolutely yeah no please do <laughs> thank you i believe i shall Chris, the venerable Emily Post etiquette guide has been updated for the 21st century with new rules for modern communication technology. Okay? Okay. So here are some of the updated tips. We're going to go down the list and we're going to give our thoughts. Okay? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Never interrupt a conversation to answer a call, email, or text. Can you agree with Excuse that? Excuse me. <laughs> put, <laughs> put your cell phone down. <laughs> You're looking at your cell phone. I know, but doing, it's an airplane mode. We're doing, a, an, we're doing a podcast, and you're looking at your goddamn phone. I'm reading off of the phone, Chris. Because you can't let it go. Okay. Which, by the way, I, I am going to quote you, because this was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why don't you get a cover to protect that phone? To which Cole responds, because I'm cognizant of the fact that I have a $500 piece of glass in my pocket. <laughs> You're making me sound like like a douchebag from a 1980s movie. Like he's going to win the regatta. Oh, no, I'm I'm in a I'm in a seat with a straight back in the etiquette corner. Okay, okay, I understand. I, I accept your rebuttal. Okay, okay. Well, on the phone and a dune buggy. Is there is like a motorcycle past. race outside? <laughs> it's a, Chris, Chris, we're in the middle of Excite Bike. Where they're filming the Excite Bike movie oh in this God. neighborhood. Which the point of the ramp that went up to the plateau, I yeah. didn't get that. Uh, it was just, you know, to add some verticality to the mm -hmm. level design. It's kind know? of weird. I don't know. Whatever, you know. While on the phone, don't be typing, eating, or shuffling papers or doing anything else that tells the caller your attention is elsewhere. Especially, don't call from the stall. I'm a, I'm guilty. You, because <laughs> you are I'm, on trial. I, I am guilty. You are on trial. I will have a conversation with you that ends with a wait a minute, one second, and then and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I'm back. You're back from what? You're back from voiding your bowels. I was tying my shoes. <laughs> we need to get a video of that. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> now we're moving on from phones to, uh, to 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 email. Respond to personal emails within forty eight hours. Respond to business emails within twenty four hours. I I, I like that as 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 you're somebody. Like, mm -hmm. But you're like one of those people that like you do the you know inbox zero. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, you I subscribe do. to that. I subscribe to that ethos, Chris. But I, I save know. emails. As a little bit of a CYA, <laughs> but because like in my work, no, I, I, I save you like so that I can say no. I, you know, on October twenty second at nine thirty six a.m., I sent you this, so you're yeah. fucking wrong. No, no, I don't. I don't send it off Just, into the void. It's archived. The idea is that your inbox should be a staging area, not a to do list, right? 
And we're not going to get into it here. But, you know, promptness of response is nice. Yeah, I mean, I could agree yeah. with that. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to set an, you know, an expectation like, oh, if you email me, I'm going to get back to you within five minutes. But, you know, within a day. Come on. We're, we're, we're civilized humans here. Moving on to Facebook. You're not required to respond to every person who contacts you on Facebook. I believe in this. And I've hurt some people's feelings. You're not required to respond to everybody that comments to you. Right, right. Or, you know, sends you a friend request. You can ignore that. Yeah, you I can do, I do. people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's some awful humans out there, some of whom want to, you know, know when I'm taking a poop. You're not required to continue contact with a new Facebook friend at, after the initial reconcil- or re, uh, reconnection message. So, you know, somebody from high school, you know, emails you and said, hey, you know, found you on Facebook, saw your pics. Cool. Um, sorry about all that stuff I did. Bye. You respond back and say, hey, cool, I'll scratch you off the list. Talk to you later. And then they start sending you, like, requests to play Mafia Wars. You're not, you're not, you're not required to give them the time of day. Invite right? you to their Christian motorcycle rally. <laughs> <laughs> Which is taking place during the filming of the Excite Bike movie. Yeah. And so you're, you're in favor? I guess. Okay. I mean, but I... No, like, they, they, she sent, Emily Post sent these to me to veto or approve. So, so okay. That's good. Makes sense. Before posting about a loved one's death on Facebook, make sure that the deceased relatives know. Hey, Jerry died. So you're supposed to have a personal call and then post from a Facebook? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's, that's a pretty shitty way to find out bad news, right? What did, I mean, okay, so just a regular comment. So it's still okay to start a group that says, thank God Jerry's dead. You know, Chris, it's a gray area. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. And you don't need to follow someone on Twitter just because they are following you. Which is good, because you have to maintain that ratio, I don't right? do Twitter. You don't do Twitter, don't but, do Twitter. but it's important. Like, when somebody follows you on Twitter and you say that, oh, hey, they're following 80,000 people, and then, like, four people are following them, I am proud that at any given time, I always have twice as many people following me as I am following. Are you following Stevie Nicks, or what? <laughs> What's that? No. Oh, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> do you... What you what, what? Chris, I don't do cocaine, but when I want to find out about interesting ways to do cocaine stevie <laughs> nicks is the place that i go she had her like roadies blow it up her ass okay really really it's huh. amazing that is incredible that 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 tiny tiny little woman she did more coke she did all of the coke huh and i'm gonna follow her and do that so that's etiquette for the new era chris in this era where technology enables people to act like complete and utter barbarians to themselves you know what? Seriously, if you're going to send somebody a birthday thing, like say, hey, I hope it's a great one. You know, anything except just happy birthday, comma, name. Mm, so angry. First off, they didn't know your birthday. It <laughs> popped up on the, on the Facebook exactly. like, hey, it's Cole's birthday. Uh, and they're like, Cole who? <laughs> oh, fucking happy oh, yeah. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I don't do that. Yeah. It's like some people, I don't even respond to that. <laughs> I don't. Uh, yeah. I, I really don't. No. Okay. No. Can I take you to the science, the science zone? Birds. Okay. Sounds good. Now, this is going to be awesome for you. <laughs> okay. Terrifying to me. Okay. Okay. You're going to, you would love, you're going to love the world here soon. And I'm going to be in a uh, shelter. <laughs> Birds in Central California are significantly larger than they were 25 to 40 years ago, and researchers believe it may be because they are bulking up in body weight to ride out severe storms related to global climate change. (laughs) Over the last 25 years, a robin, for example, has increased about an eighth of an inch in wing length and about 0.2 ounces in mass. The findings fly in the face of assumptions based on an ecological benchmark known as Bergman's Rule, where birds and mammals tend to be larger at higher at higher latitudes, perhaps to conserve body heat. Under this reasoning, birds and mammals would get smaller as they adapted to rising global temperatures. Yeah, yeah. I gotcha. Why am I going to love this world? Because you love birds. Oh, I do like birds. I do yeah. like birds a lot. Yeah, you, you really <laughs> like birds. The gigantic and the, birds. And the thought of gigantic birds to me is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Because you're not talking about like prehistoric kind of. I go to sleep know. every night, every night. Yeah, 
And and my my bad dream, my terrifying cold sweat wake up dream, <laughs> is that I'm being scooped up by a pterodactyl <laughs> and just dropped into the nest with the gigantic eggs. Yeah, yeah. You know they're there so that the so that the fledglings can feast on you when they hatch, and there's nothing that you can do. One one, one second here, I need to do something about this erection. Um, uh, <laughs> What did you do? I didn't see you do anything. <laughs> okay, and Chris, it's it's we're cre- we're it's theater of the mind. All right? Did you make it go away? I willed it to go away. Really? I willed it to go away. Huh? I don't know. Wow. Hey, you know, there's a rhyme and reason to things that happen. There, there are there are natural laws that are affected. But you know, you got these strong. Yeah, you got these bigger birds. You know, you might need a. You, you know, you, you, their food chain. They might need to bulk up, and they might need to be better you know, equipped to survive with these gigantic ass birds flying around, you know? So can I tell you about some research that be, that's being done in uh, Switzerland? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Swiss scientists have used genetic manipulation to make a mouse whose muscles are twice as strong as the muscles on a normal mouse. This was done by disabling an inhibitor gene, which is thought to control muscle strength. The result is that the affected mice take twice as long to experience fatigue during strenuous physical activity. If this treatment is also effective on humans, it could open up doors to treating muscle degeneration in the elderly. The therapy could also be abused by professional athletes. So, yeah, these you know, it is everything's going to be okay. The balance is going to be is going to be maintained, right? Birds eat mice, mice get stronger. We're good. Well, really, humanity is fucked, but... <laughs> Why, because they're making old people live longer? <laughs> I know. We need less people. We need less people on this earth. So many olds just just clogging, clogging our supermarket lanes. Just stop it. <laughs> Please. And I'd love a job, but Grandma won't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something like like uh, the elderly, like the, like the new retirement age is like slowly moving up to 80. It's like... <laughs> stop get, it. Get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Move or get out of the way. That third heart attack, that was the one. Give up. <laughs> that was the sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, just be there to tell us stories on Tuesdays. Okay? That's all that we need. Talk to Mitch Album. He knows. I prefer fried green tomatoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just, Is it my turn? I don't know. Can I tell you, since I mentioned supermarket aisles, I need to share this. I need to share this anecdote with the listeners. I believe that I told you this story. I was, I was in Target and I was walking by the uh, office supplies as I want to do. I, I, I like office supplies. Um, so I wanted to see if they had any good deals on index cards or binder clips or what have you. And at the end of the aisle, there was this woman, a middle-aged woman who was, hunched over and she was just visibly flustered and she was by the she was by the poster board she was alone and she said out loud apropos of nothing to no one in particular apparently we don't believe in colored poster board anymore isn't the poster board by the markers you can make it any color you want bitch (laughs) (laughs) said the target employee (laughs) as they they restrained her (laughs) <laughs> she was putting the system on trial. She was holding them accountable. Picked up a clear and scented candle and beat him over the head <laughs> from the end cap. From the end cap. And the you know, find them at eye level because they want them to sell. That's how you move product in the target business. If you like being around office supplies, you should get a job in an office. <laughs> you shut your goddamn you mouth. You be around them enough. You shut your goddamn mouth. I'm Chris. me. I'm sick of I'm sick of office supplies. <laughs> I'm in an office a lot. I'm a recreational user, Chris. Oh, God. Okay. That's the worst kind. <laughs> you, just, you just need them. Whereas I, I overlook whereas, them. Whereas you tolerate them. Yeah. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Blue pens or black pens, Chris? Hmm. Blue pens. The hardest part of my day <laughs> is deciding what to let go with you. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of them, I'm just like, no, you can't do that to them. <laughs> And then you say something, and I'm like, fuck him. And then I do it. <laughs> I don't need protection, Chris. I don't need protection. Just gonna... this, world, this world's not good enough for me. But every time I do it, I feel like I'm stomping it. Like like, like, I, like for weeks, I've nursed and bottle-fed a baby bird. <laughs> yeah. And then just one day, I'm like, you know what? And You're I stomp too... it. Chris, that's power, you know? I don't it's even know. First it giveth, and it taketh away. I have no idea. I have no idea. Chris, tell me a story. 
We were talking about old, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, pushed for space, a Spanish cemetery has begun placing stickers on thousands of burial sites <clears throat> whose leases are up as a warning to relatives or caretakers to pay up or face possible eviction. Where's grandma? I want grandma. What's grandma? <laughs> Spanish cemeteries no longer allow uh, people to buy grave sites and instead leases them out for periods of five or 49 years. The eviction cases involved graves whose leases had not been renewed for 15 years or more. The cemetery director is quoted as saying, If we keep on building and building spaces for human remains, where are we going to end up? Makes sense. I, it does. I mean, on okay, here we go. I have, two, I have two masters on this one, all right? Two opposing forces are, 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 are waging war Godzilla-like in my head, all right? Bader and Locke. <laughs> what? You have two masters, Bader and Locke. I guess. I don't know. I don't understand. Put Bader and Locke after Master. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, that wasn't even fair. Well, I subscribe to the Bader and Locke theory. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the philosopher, John Locke. <clears throat> no, you can no. put an E on it if you want. <laughs> um, no. I, uh, I, you know, on one hand, yes. It is, it's it's untenable as the population of the earth grows. We you know disposing of bodies is a real problem. So yeah, there's you know from a real estate and conservation of mass issue, we need to find a more sensible way to get rid of them. And there are lots of sensible alternatives. You're from, talking about living. You're talking about dead people. I'm talking about you know. I'm for, talking for about now. I'm talking for, about for the now. living old <laughs> for for now. I'm talking, I'm talking about the olds that won't let go. But uh, on the other I hand... I want your 1993 Plymouth Sundance that's please. like in mint congestion. Cherry garage cap. You never drove it in the winter 20,000 miles for $2,500? Yeah. It, it just... Sweet deal. Florida kept. <laughs> you don't want to buy a car that was in Florida. The saltwater air will tear you up. Well, well it'll rust know. through the lines and stuff. That's, All right, that's a, Georgia, a, bad a, Georgia, a Georgia vehicle. Why then? Georgia? Alabama. Same thing. Perhaps. Alabama are getting closer. You want one that's from a dry climate, Chris, with not a lot of salt water in the air. Okay. Arizona. Arizona. There we go. Great. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, no, but but you start upsetting all these bodies, Chris. You have a full on like haunting on your ass. I'm you know I'm I'm a skeptical person. I am a sensible person, but I think you move enough dead bodies, something somewhere is going to get pissed off. Burn them all. As a matter of policy. <laughs> Chris, spirits. You can't burn spirits. Burn them all. You can crush them. You can crush spirits. Yeah, burn them all. You can drink spirits. Wow. Uh, it, it was a pun, Chris. As I... Drinking oh, spe it's just God, spirits. Right. Yeah, there yeah. we go. It took you a minute. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Should I have like done the double fist pump and smiled at you? That way you got the joke. I invented. I think it was thinking about pulverizers and blenders and oh, yeah. some sort of <laughs> thick sludgy drink. Oh, let's and... do this. Let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's fat. Let's put that soiling green tip on the front burner. What are you gonna do? If not I'm gonna drink a dead body. I guess. That's so metal. It is. It's metal, Chris. The problem here is that they don't bury people. They put it's all above ground. Like oh, they're yeah, on yeah. shelves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. No, no. Just set them out. You know, just destroy them. Don't, don't, don't put a body in the ground. Plant a goddamn tree. Mm -hmm. Plant a tree in their memory. That way it grows. That way it grows and feeds the birds. Libraries are like that. I mean, shelves. They shelve dead people. They shelve books yeah, in libraries, yeah. and you got to move stuff out and like. You know, every time that you know Dennis Leary writes a new book, they get rid of one of the versions of the Bible. <laughs> like, that's what happens. Uh, yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens. Speaking of things that were put into the world and then called back out, can I tell you a little story, Chris? You ask me. What one one hundred thousand DVD copies of Atlas Shrugged Part One have been recalled due to a misprint on the packaging. The original copy read Ayn Rand's timeless novel of courage and self-sacrifice. Now, anybody who knows anything about Ayn Rand knows that that runs counter to her entire objectivist philosophy, which is the, uh, uh, the supremacy of self-interest. Now, the new copy reads, you know, Ayn Rand's timeless novel of rational self-interest. But Chris, that's the free market. You send this stuff out to a, you send this stuff out to a cheap DVD printing press because your movie's not that great. You know they're going to give you shoddy work, and people are going to buy it, and they should be stuck with it. You know why should we be recalling these things? You know I think that they should recall them again. There what? needs to be a disclaimer on the front of that that says, "Do not <laughs> attempt to actually lift world." 
<laughs> These are trained professionals lifting this world. <laughs> oh, you got me. You got me. Ah, oh, well done, sir. Tell me a story. No, it's going to be a story about the Brits. Oh, yeah. In an undercover operation, the police over there, across the pond, sent letters to dozens of people who had evaded arrest for several months. They were asked to call a marketing company to collect a free crate of beer. A total of 19 suspects fell for the hoax and called the number, which put them straight through to the police station. A time and date was arranged for the free alcohol to be delivered, but instead the suspects were arrested. <laughs> One note tab, there's no such thing as a free beer. True. Unless Remember you're a sexy that. lady. There's no such thing as free tickets to Disney World. That's and, great. And believe it or not, even after being in a relationship for 10 years, there's no such thing as a free BJ. Chris, In fact, there's... it gets more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, 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 that's great because that's hinging on a lot of factors. You know, who, who's going to turn down free beer? <laughs> but. I, I don't have any. I don't have anything clever to say. Bravo, Brits! I think we should do that. You know, they do that Is here that, too, though. I'm sure they do. But free they'll be like, oh, free tickets to sporting event, <laughs> to, to municipal, <laughs> to sporting event at municipal field. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait exactly. a second. Wait a second. That seems really weird. Why are, they, why are they telling me to bring a straight to jumpsuit? Free incriminating evidence bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Sex, sex slave amnesty party. What are you going to do? I went dark with it. Oh, man, Chris. Since we're talking about the uh, criminal systems from around the world, it sounds like Britain's being kind of hard, you know, pretty harsh. <laughs> if you record your rapes on CDRWs, we'll wipe them for you. Who uses CDRWs anymore? <laughs> Optical media is dead. Oh, man. Chris, a prison in Acapulco, Mexico, is under fire after a large amount of contraband was discovered during a raid. Among the illicit materials, officials found two peacocks, 100 fighting cocks, 19 prostitutes, 100 plasma television sets, and two sacks of marijuana. Those in charge had no idea how the birds or the women, in London they call women birds, so they had to make the distinction, got into the prison. Chris, 100 fighting cocks, two peacocks, and a partridge, and a pear tree. The pear tree also contraband. My hard drive's in a solid state. <laughs> what? I have an erection. That story was good. <laughs> See, it's but it's funny because it's already a hard drive. That optical media is dead. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. Anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll edit that in soon. So are we sure? No, it's okay because it took me that long to think of it. Okay. Now, what were you saying? <laughs> No, it, it sounds to me like what they found there is like a GTA, like a uh, loot uh, menu of some sort. <laughs> yeah, they're out there. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto San Juan. Well, not San, San Juan, I guess, is in America. I don't care. I don't know. I don't like what's geography. I'm not sure. Do I know geology. Do you want to watch this prostitute poop a cell phone into a peacock's mouth? <laughs> of course I do. I would I would pay nine ninety five on the Internet. My answer that. yesterday was yes. And today is yes as well. <laughs> so quit asking me, please. <laughs> That woman is very cognizant of the fact that she keistered a $600 piece of glass. I have no okay? idea. Thanks, NBC. <laughs> Why would you own a peacock? Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Why would you need a peacock? All I'm imagining is like some kind of like fantasy island inside the walls of this prison. Like, uh, there's no point. It's, it's security theater. Why are we putting them in these cells? We should just cordon off an entire city, escape from New York style, and just let them have at it. Just... Just make it. Let's get Kurt Russell in here. He knows this story. He's lived this life. Dude, Captain Rod wouldn't make it five minutes on that island. <laughs> <laughs> something, something, Stargate. Oh, man. That, those are the only Kurt Russell movies He's tough as shit for Ben Goldie Hawn for all those years. Was he in Multiplicity? No, that was, uh, that was uh, Michael Keaton. Michael yeah, Michael Keaton. Keaton mm -hmm. Who was also in Dream Team with Peter Boyle, who was in Young Frankenstein with gene wilder who inspired the role of beetlejuice played by michael keaton who played that with alec baldwin who was a script supervisor on apollo 13 which starred in a supporting role tom hanks okay a transgender woman named o'neill ron morris 
was arrested on, in Florida on charges of practicing medicine without a license. The crime was reported by a, quote, patient who asked Morris for a buttocks enhancement, but was then injected with fix-a-flat mineral oil, super glue, and concrete. The victim was then hospitalized due to complications from the back alley surgery. Chris, she got junk in that trunk. Less cushion for the pushin because that would actually be a very hard ass. Why you gotta be such a hard ass, Chris? Well. Solid state? You ever bang a sidewalk? <laughs> it's kind of like that. In my darker moments, I've considered it. I had a friend who described having having uh, intimate relations with a with a girl as uh, like uh, having as penetrating a wet sandbag. <laughs> and he, he knows real. who he is, and if he listens, he listens. But it, yeah, it was like it's like banging a, a wet sand. Oh, and, and, and wet sand, if left alone long enough, turns into. Well, yeah, 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 what are you going to do? Yeah, you know. But I also have a friend who just desc- another friend. This is a separate person. <laughs> okay. It's not the same dude who described having, having intercourse with, with a girl as with like effing a, a flat inner tube. What? Yeah. Are these, are these people so, banging automatons that they created so in their I garages? Think if we survey both of these friends of oh. mine. Oh, oh, play matchmaker. They could, you know, DP that lady. <laughs> Because they like it. I'm pretty sure it was a dude. Oh, yeah. But I saw the picture. Well, no, no. The 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 woman in the picture. That was that would that was the woman who was, you know, doing the surgery. She, I think, was doing a little bit of real medicine there. So o- you know. O'Neill, Ron, or Ron O'Neill, O'Neill Ron, a, a transgender woman. So no, yeah, well, she, that's a okay. So that's the doctor. That's the doctor. So I mean, you know, obviously you need you need to you need to write what you know. You have to, I you said know, doctor. <laughs> Chris, Chris, pump Put this the lime in the coconuts, mix it all up. Put it inspires confidence. In coconut, mix it all up. If you want somebody to pump that ass, you got to have somebody pump that ass with chemicals. Doctor. <laughs> This has been Those Damn Roskets. So there are a few very simple things that you can do to help us out. First and foremost would be to go to iTunes, leave us a review, a rating. You can like us on Facebook and comment there. You can suggest stories. I would like to apologize. There was one story last week that we used that we didn't give credit to. I believe it was recommended by Carlo. That was the Lego man washing up on shore. So we apologize for that oversight. We want to make sure that credit is given where credit is due. He lives in an island paradise. He (laughs) he needs to be. Carla, Carla needs to be happier. Well, I mean, he has to look. We got a new new friend like Lou Bai or something like that. Some, some, some chick who should live where Carlo lives, but doesn't (laughs) just by the name, you know, because you, you know, you can't. You can't judge people no. at all any, but, anymore. I used to be really good at that. <laughs> they made that not possible. Yeah, yeah. They made that I think she's from like Kansas society. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. So thank you, Lou. And thank you, Bert. But, that, but yeah, L-U-B-A-I. Yeah. Kansas. I was right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So uh, what else can they do? They can leave us a voicemail, as is mentioned at the beginning of the show. But we haven't gotten any, except for the one from Gary. So uh, if, if you want that to stick around, it's a privilege. Ask us questions. Ask us questions about our lives or what you should do about important decisions that you're going to be making. That number is 419-528-TDRK. I, I mean, you got it. It okay. seems like we covered it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good night. <laughs>